Today I'm going to talk about one of the biggest rock bands in the world, the Beatles. It's interesting because their entire existence took place in a period of about seven years, from 1964 to 1970. During that time, they released a number of albums. Back then, things were different because they had their studio albums that were released in the UK, and they had American versions which were slightly different. Uh, I want to talk about two albums that were released in January of 64. They're celebrating 60 years. They were both on North American versions of Beatles albums. As a side note, these AI-generated images are pretty trippy, <laughs> aren't they? The first one is called Introducing the Beatles. It was released on January 10th, 1964. The second one was called Meet the Beatles. That was released on January 20th, 1964. So we have two albums released 10 days apart. The thing that came to my mind was, if the first album was called Introducing the Beatles, why is the second album called Meet the Beatles if they were already introduced before? It doesn't make sense. But it goes deeper into that. There were uh, different record companies releasing these albums, and I'll talk about that in this video. Um, I'll start with introducing the Beatles. I'll give you a little backstory. Then I'll talk about Meet the Beatles, and I'll talk about that and some of the tracks on the popular American release. So let's uh, get into this. So introducing the Beatles is the debut North American studio album, originally set for a July 63 release. It was released on January 10th, 64 through VJ Records um, just 10 days before Capitals Meet the Beatles. So despite uh, Meet the Beatles reaching number one for 11 consecutive weeks, introducing a stall at number two for nine consecutive weeks due to the timing of their releases. Um, legal disputes arose, but VJ was allowed to sell the album until late of 64, by which time it had sold over 1.3 million copies. The album was certified gold and platinum by the RIAA on July 24th, 2014. The backstory revolves around the Beatles' recording contract with Parlophone in the UK and the negotiations with various labels. This led to VJ Records obtaining the rights to Beatles Records in the US. Initially, VJ planned to release the album Please Please Me, but they chose to omit certain tracks, change the title to Introducing the Beatles, and alter the order to fit in the American norm, whatever that means. <laughs> so even though our preparations were made for a July 63 release, Unfortunately, the album wasn't actually released that year uh, due to a management shakeup at VJ, which resulted in the cancellation of the release. Let's talk about Meet the Beatles. Uh, so Meet the Beatles is a second studio album. Capital uh, released it in the U.S. on January 20th of 64. It's the group's first American album issued by Capitol. Uh, the album reached uh, the top of the album chart um, on February 15th of uh, 1964. It stayed at number one for 11 weeks. The cover uh, features Robert Freeman's iconic portrait of the Beatles, originally used for with the Beatles in the UK, but with a blue tint added. Uh, Capitol Records was initially hesitant to release Beatles records in the US. However, due to EMI's directive, Capitol Records began promoting and releasing Beatles records in the US. The CD reissue of the album is featured in two box sets, the Capitol Albums Volume 1 in 2004 and the US Albums in 2014, both of which include the original U.S. stereo and mono mixes. The album's music includes uh, the December 1963 Capitol single, I Want to Hold Your Hand, and its B-sides. Capitol made the confident decision to only include original Beatles songs, with the exception of Till There Was You. It's important to note that the songs I Want to Hold Your Hand and This Boy are in duophonic or fake stereo, as Capitol failed to provide proper stereo mixes. I want to talk about a few tracks, uh, mostly the ones that weren't on the original Beatles albums. They were standalone singles, and they are as follows. I Want to Hold Your Hand stands as one of the Beatles' most popular and iconic songs. Undoubtedly, is one of the first songs ever heard from the band. I remember having the Red and Blue Greatest Hits albums when I was younger. I believe the song was on the Red album. The song was written by none other than John Lennon and Paul McCartney and recorded on October 17, 1963, marking the Beatles' first use of the four-track recording equipment. Song's advance orders in the UK exceeded 1 million copies, despite being initially blocked from reaching on the top of the British charts by the group's previous hit, She Loves You. Claimed number one spot after two weeks and remained there for five weeks. It spent a total of 21 weeks in the UK top 50. The Beatles song, I Want to Hold Your Hand, was the first number one hit in the US and marked the beginning of the British invasion in the American music industry. With over 12 million copies sold, it's the Beatles' uh, best-selling single worldwide. In 2018, Billboard magazine ranked it as the 48th biggest hit of all time on the Billboard Hot 100. 
The single was second highest selling of the 1960s in the UK, only behind She Loves You. The single, I Want to Hold Your Hand, had a very popular song on the B-side called I Saw Her Standing There, so let's talk about that. I Saw Her Standing There was written by uh, McCartney and Lennon. It's uh, the opening track on the band's uh, 63 debut album, Please Please Me, and uh, their debut U.S. album, Introducing the Beatles. In December 63, Capitol Records released it as the B-side to the Beatles' first U.S. single, I Want to Hold Your Hand. While the A-side topped the U.S. Billboard chart, I saw her standing there enter the Billboard Hot 100, peaking at number 14 and spending 11 weeks on the chart. In 2004, Rolling Stone ranked it number 139 on the list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. The song's composition originated from McCartney's uh, modern take on the traditional song, As I Rolled Out, originally titled 17. McCartney conceived the song while driving home from a Beatles concert and completed it about a month later at his home in collaboration with Lennon. The lyrics were written in a Liverpool Institute exercise book, capturing uh, McCartney's playful and collaborative approach to songwriting. The song features a bass riff borrowed from Chuck Berry's uh, Talking About You. A bass riff doesn't need to be original. Songwriting credit on the original release is McCartney Lennon, a variation of the more familiar Lennon McCartney that later appeared on subsequent releases. Let's talk about one more song that was on Meet the Beatles called This Boy. This Boy was written by John Lennon and credited to Lennon McCartney, uh, released in uh, November of 63 as the B-side of I Want to Hold Your Hand. That was a single in the UK, and it was later included on the US album Meet the Beatles in January of 64. The Beatles performed the song live on the Ed Sullivan Show in February of 64. An instrumental arrangement by George Martin titled Ringo's theme, This Boy, Appeared in the film A Hard Day's Night and as a single, reaching 53 in the U.S. and number one in Canada. Lennon aimed to emulate Smokey Robinson's style, particularly the song I've Been Good to You, in composing this boy. This track features intricate three-part harmony in the verses and refrain, a technique also used in later Beatles songs. The song is very notable. It has that doo-wop sound that was popular style of music. All the hip teenagers used to love to dance to that music. I really like the song because the Beatles were always uh, masters of creating harmonies, and it was a great example of that. If you're wondering where you can find this track, it's been on various box sets and compilations. That's if you don't have the American album. So if you're wondering how would I rank the original Beatles discography, I did a ranking a while back. Why don't you check it out? It's here on the screen. Uh, please like this video. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next one.